Hey squad, this is Prepping with Sarge, and today we're gonna to review the Spyderco Smock. This is one of my collection knives, not so much one that I EDC, but let's take a look at it. I think you're gonna like it. Stay with me now. All right, the handle is 4.53 inches. Blade is 3.39 inches. Give you a good look at the both sides of this. We'll talk about the steel and everything in a minute. Overall length is 7.92 inches and it weighs 3.64 ounces. The width across the blade is one inch and the thickness is 0.12 inches. Now this blade is kind of a reverse tanto tip. Uh, it's similar to a Warcliffe design, but the camera can pick that up. There is a slight curve to that. So a Warcliffe is typically kind of straight. This one's got a little bit of a curve to it. It is CPM S30V stainless steel with a hollow grind. So S30V stainless steel is a pretty good balance between corrosion resistance, easy to grind and, and sharpen, and a decent edge retention. This whole knife was designed by Kevin Smock, hence the name. It has ball bearing pivot washers, which makes it really fun to fidget with. I'll show you some examples of that in just a minute. The liners are stainless steel. The handle is a skeletonized carbon fiber G10. It's got a nice grippy texture to it. Give you a look at both sides of that. It is a tip up carry. The clip is reversible for you lefties. The lock is one of the more interesting designs that I've seen on a knife. This is a button compression lock. It's actually got a really good lock up. We got no wobble there. And to close it, basically you're gonna hit that compression lock and that is going to open up the bar. If you can see that in the camera, I'll show you again. The lock inside there, and then it's pretty drop shutty. This is a pretty slick knife. Taking a look at the blade here, we do have a choil. Uh, if you like to use those for intricate tasks and this particular reverse tanto tip, might be pretty good for getting into small little spaces if you're doing a little bit of whittling, things like that. I actually wish this choil was just a little bit bigger. I feel like it's a little bit easier for somebody with man-sized hands. You know, not all of us have these tiny little wimpy hands. Some of us have man-sized hands and I feel like it's really, see, I just actually almost cut myself there. I actually felt that. So uh, yeah, I just wish that choil was just a little bit, a little bit bigger. Um, little bit, and, and not everybody likes choils, by the way. There was a point where actually I didn't like choils, but I've, they've kind of grown on me. Uh, just a little bit of jimping on the back. It's not aggressive jimping at all. It's actually a little bit different than the typical typical style of jimping that you see on a lot of knives. So obviously this one's, you know, kind of a little, little bit of an unorthodox shape. What kind of tasks would this be good for? Obviously, you know, cutting fruits and steaks and things like that. It's going to do just fine for things like that. It'll handle other tasks, you know, of course, cutting up cardboard and everything like that. Um, you know, it's, I, I think more than anything, why I wanted this one is it's got a unique look to it and uh, kind of a conversation piece. So as you can see, it's very fidget friendly and me, somebody with ADD, I do play with my knives a lot. And so that's part of the appeal of this one is that it's just very, very slick. So you've got many different ways you can open this one. You've got a kind of a squared off flipper there, right? That's gonna be the easiest way. Some people like to do this like over the top flip, which I'm not really fond of it, but maybe you like to do that. Of course, with that square hole thumb design, you can open it that way. <laughs> and then of course you can do the spidey flick right? And a couple people have asked me, how do you do that spidey flick? I'll show you real quick, but maybe I'll do a full video or a short on that at some point. Basically, you're going to get your fingernail under there and into the hole and you're going to grip it with your thumb and the palm of your hand a little bit. You got to give yourself enough space for it to open at the top. So you're going to have to choke up a little bit. You know, you got to, you got to give a little bit more headspace at the top for this to work usually that's at least for me that's how i have to do it and then you just give it a little flick with your finger take some getting used to it once you got it it's it comes pretty easy and again this is very drop shutty it's very fidget friendly let's do a little sharpness test with this All thing right. let's do a little sharpness test with some paracord first no problem there ridiculously sharp actually let's do two yeah, this thing is like ridiculously sharp. 
and these are kind of short, but let's see, let's see if we can do three with this. Shouldn't be a problem. It's more of a problem of can I get a, get the grip because they're kind of short pieces. Here we go. Yeah, this is this is ridiculously sharp compared to other knives that I've done this test on. No resistance at all. Um, all right, let's get the paracord out of the way. Let me try a little paper test here. I'm gonna move my camera just a little bit. And for those of you who are not aware, different types of tests that you can do with your knives. Paper test is one of the best te best ways to test sharpness of a knife. Oh, dang. Yeah, this thing's like a razor, guys. Yeah, no questions. I don't even need to do any more. I'm really satisfied with this. So it's a fun little knife. Definitely you expect for the amount of money that you're, you're spending on a Spartaco, you're gonna, you're gonna want high craftsmanship and this delivers. You're gonna want it to have a really good factory edge. This delivers. So uh, it's fun. It's a little unorthodox, but it's, it's definitely a fun knife. If you're a knife collector, this is probably one you wanna be thinking about for your collection. If you're just somebody who's looking for a knife for work, maybe you don't need the Spartaco smock. But if you're a knife guy, it's hard to pass that up, isn't it? It's definitely a very unique looking knife. Conversation starter. Bring it to the barbecue, show all your friends. People are going to want to know, like, what is that, man? What, where'd, you, where'd you find that? How much was it, right? So there you go, folks. Hey, folks, I hope you enjoyed this knife review. If you got anything of value out of this, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a full playlist of... Uh, knife reviews that I think you'll like. In fact, we'll drop that somewhere up here so that you can easily link to that. But if you don't see that link up there, we'll go ahead and drop it in the end screen as well. Make sure you check down below for some links and discounts for products that I think you'll like. And I will also try to put a link down below for your Spartaco smock so you can check it out and order right from this video down below in the description. Also, don't forget, in a few weeks, I'm going to be headed to Blade Show, so stay tuned for all that footage. I'm going to have all kinds of knife reviews, talking to knife makers, see if I can get you some discount codes in there. Keep planting your seeds, keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge.